The Shadow Over Freddy's is a very dark Five Nights at Freddy's fan game, both figuratively and literally. You can't see anything? Me neither. And some might even say, scary? Anyone here like haircuts? Do we like getting haircuts around here? That guy gets what I'm saying. Developed by Fiznot, the guy making FNAF Plus, it's actually a really good fan game. It's got new mechanics and an actually coherent story, unlike the main games. I stream this right here on YouTube, so if you enjoy this, consider subscribing or joining the Discord if you don't want to miss out. If you despise me and do want to miss out, then I guess don't do that. I don't know if you've ever heard of a little game called Five Nights at Freddy's. It's a little underground. I saw Markiplier started playing it recently. I thought I'd give it a try. It looked like a new up-and-coming indie game. Wake up in a small room laying down on a cold checkered floor with your back against a wall. How am I laying down on the floor with my back against the wall? Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. It's great to have you back home. Oh goodness. Okay. These instructions will appear every night before going out into the restaurant. Click on them to continue. Okay. What do you consider an open path? Ah, okay, I'm now I'm still in the tutorial. I wasn't being told to do that. Hostile presence is watching. Complete your objectives before 6 a.m. or you'll be attacked. Ah, oh, okay. Night one is that's that's pretty easy, right? Ah, I see, okay. So the supply closet. The, the the supply closet, the salami lid, I'll learn. I'm sure the scary noises are insignificant. Hmm. Yeah, I, I hate this, actually. I just realized. Whoa, let me just crash my game real quick. Listen to my footsteps. That's the stage. I don't want to go on the stage. Don't let me go on the stage. Exit. I'm assuming this is fine. You are pulled back to safety by a floating featureless figure. Standing before you with its eyes locked on your pale face, it looks like it wants to help you recover your lost memories. Oh. Shadow offers you a story to clear your head. Will you accept? Yes. Give me the story. Yeah, that looks friendly. Okay. There once was a little kid who liked to play with his toys by his lonesome. No. That dog is not looking too good, if I'm being honest. Although he was alone, he was content in living out his youth playing with the plastic friends his parents had gifted him with. They were a small mannequin, a stuffed teddy bear, a porcelain dress-up doll, and a toy robot. Hmm. He has no head. See what I'm missing? I'm going to need some of that. But one day, the family's pet dog stole one of the toys during his playtime. Dang it. Into the woods, he excitedly ran away with the toy robot, prompting the kid to chase after him to reclaim his friend. Annoyed by the dog's playful attitude, the kid caught up, grabbing the toy from the thief's mouth he began to pull. Oh, to be young and carefree, a kid and his dog playing tug-of-war in the back garden of their house with no one to interrupt them. Seems like a wonderful memory, doesn't it? Does he kill the dog? By chance. That seems like something that might happen. Toy robot was almost free from the dog's mouth when... I wouldn't do that to my dog, personally. He walked back home, leaving the animal twitching helplessly on the grass, with barely enough room left in its swollen neck to let out a pitiful dry howl. Alright. Later that afternoon, the parents found the body of the dog, they buried it where it stood. Okay. And that's the point where you submit your kid into, like, I don't know, therapy or something. Contact a psychiatrist, maybe? Isn't, like, harming animals, like, the first signs of, like, a serial killer? Why'd the dog have a white glow and black eyeball? IDK. Evil dog, maybe. New presence has appeared in the restaurant. It hides in rooms waiting for you to pass by. Be careful where you're going. I'm not very happy about this. Maybe it's a good thing he killed the dog, to be fair. 
Hold right click on an open path to listen to sounds coming from adjacent rooms. <laughs> the more time passes, the better you'll hear. The, the thing is, like, there's already ambient breathing and stuff. So, follow the music. Okay. I can do this. That's what I can do. This is something I can do. I'm hearing music. What game is this? Um, Freddy Fazznuts Pizzeria. Oh, no, not that way. I hear evil sounds. <laughs> Am I supposed to do something here? Okay, well I'm gonna guess since the music stopped and it did a little giggle noise that I'm probably good to go and then I, I did that correctly. Because of the way you have to listen in this game and because it's like so generally silent, if I get scared I'm gonna... You know. Uh, I don't know if any of you have realized this. The very astute of you will notice, I did get a haircut. Anyone here like haircuts? Do we like getting haircuts around here? That guy gets what I'm saying. Yeah, haircuts are nice. I used to not like them. But once I started getting them cut, like, at a salon, you know, it's, it's a good excuse to have a girl touch your hair for, like, an extended period of time. I'm, like, really lucky they didn't screw it up really bad, because I think the girl that was cutting my hair was in training. Occasionally she would like call over the other barber and be like, am I doing this right? Like then I'd have two girls touching my hair. You know what I mean? So that was cool. Alright, we're good at games. We're good. Anyway, you know like whenever you get done with your haircut and they'll ask like, does that look okay? And they'll like show you a mirror, like turn around to face the mirror. I should have like kept telling her to just get like, trim it just a little bit more, you know? Just to have her touch my hair for longer, you know? Like every time she's like, is that good? It's like, nah, I think just maybe a little bit more would be nice. Then I walk out and it's like pitch black and I'm bald. Yes, I'm pretty sure the good ending is just to get all the stories. Unless there's like a secret I've been missing and like something I've been supposed to hunt for because it's a Five Nights at Freddy's game, so. This story I tell to you is a true story that I pray you never forget, exclamation point. Why is he yelling at me? There once was a boy who laid awake at night during a harsh downpour. Beneath the covers of his bed, he closed his eyes and tried to ignore the storm just outside his room. He felt eyes watching him from afar. Just like the books. Just like the books. The boy opened his eyes and looked toward the window. But nothing was there. He opened his eyes again and out of the corner of his eye, he spotted it. The hollow white eyes of a living shadow. It appeared just as quickly as it went away. His uneasiness pushed to the side by growing curiosity, the boy got up from his bed and approached the window. Now that's just his dog that he killed. As the toy was stolen again and being carried towards the forest, the boy couldn't help but follow along the shadow's path. What the dog doing for real? We're never going to be able to move past that. That's just going to be like a cultural thing. What the dog doing? I wanted to grow out my hair like Leon Kennedy, but I figured that would probably look really bad. And so I decided not to do that. But this time it was moving, its tiny plastic arms flailing violently from side to side, its head rotating in place. The moons were sudden but clear, unprompted by any outside influence. A spark of life was trapped inside this tiny vessel. Fascinated by such discovery, he picked up the toy from the ground and held it tightly with both of his hands to prevent it from escaping his grasp. Oh, okay, is this gonna be like William Afton kills dog, possesses toy robot, William Afton discovers that things can possess robots and so he goes on a killing spree. And then we're playing as like William Afton and someone related to him, possibly. And these stories are supposed to like remind us and if we skip all the stories we get like a bad ending because we like didn't take the morally correct route or something by listening to the stories. Is that how this is gonna turn out? Smiling from ear to ear, the boy headed back home. Three nights remaining. That's a perfect time to do the fruit of the stream. Hello, everyone. Let's talk about the fruit of the stream. Going back to my roots, if you don't know, I used to do a fruit of the stream deal, where at the beginning of every stream, I'd bring out a fruit and be like, I'm going to eat this fruit today. And if you've got one, why don't you just go ahead and join me? A real bonding experience. It really gets you closer to the audience. 
you know, forming unhealthy relationships. Anyway, today's fruit, you're going to be real excited about this one. A jalapeno. Straight from my backyard. So, if any of y'all have any jalapenos on hand, then just sit back, relax, scarf that bad boy down, and watch the stream. Isn't that a vegetable? I don't know. Let me find out. Yes. Jalapenos are fruits with seeds. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm not eating a jalapeno on stream. <laughs> Think I'm stupid? <laughs> Let's play the third knife. Don't stand still. Enemies will move into your room if you take too long. Hi, nice to see you. If a shadow is in the same room as you, it'll wait for you to move before attacking. Or fine, and scare away before you proceed. New presence has appeared in the restaurant. It moves slower, but it's hard to detect. Be patient. Well, then you are in the other I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I hope everyone enjoyed the fruit of the stream. Uh, a new presence has appeared in the restaurant. I move slower, but it's hard to detect. Be patient while leaning over into the next rooms. Okay. That was an unusually spicy jalapeno, if I'm being honest. Also, it might be because I bit it down to the stem. It didn't tell me what my objective was. Oh, I entered the kitchen. Okay. I went the wrong way. I don't know why. <laughs> I can't focus on listening because I'm crying. <laughs> I can't remember. I'm trying to remember the five nights at Freddy's one layout for the kitchen. And this is not it. Okay. I think go right also. I agree. I concur with that. <laughs> Excuse me, I need a key. As a side note, you would be able to see what I'm talking about here, but my ugly mug is covering where the items appear. Sorry. Oh! Oh yeah, that's not, that's not a good sign. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. You just missed me um, nearly kill myself eating a jalapeno. If YouTube will let me say that without strike, like, killing me. Well, what do I do? My man is right there. We'll just sit here and listen to him breathe, I guess. Say a prayer? Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm not Catholic. Why did I do the cross thing? It's a personal space. That sounds like a different one. Is that the other one? Thank you for that. Thanks for giggling. <laughs> he moved. I have a bubble in my throat. I'm gonna guess probably none of you have chickens. Uh, I hope that's not an offensive um, assumption to make. Uh, you know, chickens brood, right? Chickens are like very like mechanical in their instincts and stuff. It's really weird how they work. Anyway, so one of our chickens went into brooding mode, I guess. Which basically is what happens whenever a chicken decides to sit on an egg. They go into breeding mode. Not breeding mode. Ignore that I said that. Brooding mode, where they basically sit on eggs for like days on end because it takes like a while, right? So the issue with this is that they don't eat or drink or do anything but sit in the same place. They could theoretically just die, but of course they usually don't do that because the, the egg hatches before them and then they exit brooding mode, right? The issue with that is that we don't have fertilized eggs. 
because we don't have a rooster to fertilize the eggs. And so, if a chicken does not hatch an egg, it does not go out of brooding mode. And so, the chicken will sit down and die, essentially, if it does not hatch an egg. It'll just sit on the unfertilized ones until it kills itself. Which is obviously an issue for chicken havers like myself. You don't want them to die, usually. And so the way to fix this, <laughs> there's a couple ways. I'm about to die, also. One is to give the chicken an egg to sit on that is fertilized. Which, you know, like I said, that's it's not really within our capability. And the other is to just separate it from the eggs and all the other chickens for, like, a few days. No, but there's no key here either. You know. No, if you take the egg, they'll still, like... Yeah, I'm... I'm pretty screwed right now. If you take the egg, they'll still, like... Because we have other chickens that lay eggs. And oh my... Oh, gosh. Gosh, darn it. <laughs> gosh. <laughs> so if you take the egg, then another chicken will just lay an egg, and then it'll move over and sit on that egg. When they're in their brooding mode, they do not lay eggs. They just quit laying eggs, because obviously... That would cause an issue if you're sitting on an egg trying to hatch it and, you know, you kept laying eggs on top of it. Anyway, so we had to keep our chicken in, like, a cage for, like, a while so it wouldn't sit itself to death. And eventually it, it returned to normal, so that's good. That's great. I'm pretty sure the office closes and you're not allowed to get back whenever you leave. Try a left door. Too late. <laughs> what? <laughs> Excuse me? Am I going to shove the Chica plushie into the keyhole? I could, I could try to check the bathrooms. Oh, <coughs> man, that pepper still has me messed up. Oh, I... N nope, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I died. I'm not gonna go that way. Break room. That is where you would probably find a key. Eek. Oh. And that is where the key is. Just gonna stick to the outer corners, I guess. I don't know. Nope. Okay. Well. I guess I'm not gonna do that. We did it. There we go, everyone. Was I supposed to be getting the plushies? I bet I was supposed to be getting the plushies, wasn't I? Will I accept a story? Yes, I love story time with... Wharf Stash. Are you getting, like, easier to see every night? I don't really like that. Your head is not looking too good. This is a true story that I tell to you. I hope you're taking notes for the quiz at the end. I... hope that is a joke. There once was a young man who had grown hungry for knowledge. Going into adolescence, he had isolated himself from his family, focusing instead on his passion for the unknown. The spiritual, the place of mystery he had come to know years ago. Wow. It's us. It's me. He's just like me. Alas, it was all for naught, as no book had the key to the answers he had been seeking. All he found were vague rumors and legends, with no instructions or explanations. To continue down the rabbit hole, he knew what had to be done. Murder. Murder. Since he was a young kid, the young man never saw his dad as anything more than an obstacle. He was a moody, aggressive old alcoholic who only talked to his son when he needed something to shout at. Holy based. Okay. Having driven everyone that loved him away, the drunkard was worth less than nothing in the eyes of the boy. Thus, he was the perfect candidate. One day, when coming home, seeing the old man sprawl out on the kitchen table with a bottle in hand, he decided to show dear old daddy a new way of life. I wish it didn't phrase it like that. Fiznom, you could have written that a little differently. Holding a small felt doll in his right hand, the teen made his way to the house's garage. <laughs> shish, shish. After a few hours, the deed was done and the plan in action. The boy watched his oblivious father drive away in his car, unaware of the tampering that had been done to the vehicle. No way. Sitting on his bed, the young man took his dear pet out of the box and began to press harshly on its square plastic head. As it trembled in pain, he waited on the outcome of his small experiment. 
Oh, the humanity. Oh, the rocks. Oh, the, the doll. Okay. After the car accident, he discovered the doll that had been planted below the seat and returned to his home. But much to his frustration, no movement came from the doll. Dang it. Nothing. The vessel he had prepared for his father was empty, devoid of even a single remnant of life. Dang it. Furious by his failure, he ripped the felt doll apart and threw it aside. What a waste. Honestly. I feel this guy. I was kidding when I said there was to be a quiz, by the way. Not that it matters. Thank goodness. <laughs> Actually, I was a little worried about that one. I wasn't really paying attention. Or that you deserve it. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, any advice are you going to give me? Or are you just going to cut me loose? Okay, a new presence has appeared in the restaurant. It sleeps inside its Pirate's Cove in the southwest corner of the building. Check behind the curtains frequently or it'll escape and check your alone. <laughs> no. I don't want to have to deal with that. That sounds hard. I guess I'll go there straight away. What's the mission this time? Gift the fox, collect the pieces. Oh no. Okay. I can do that. There ain't nothing in the supply closet. How frequently is frequently? I don't see anything. Phew. Okay. Well, I'm not doing good so far. Okay, that sounds like a man. I didn't check before I walked over here. Ah, oh, thank goodness. Ah. Head. I sure hope that doesn't mean he's out. I need to check there. Those are so hard to see. Okay, 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 okay. We're checking. Okay, okay. Excuse me. Okay. That's that's an extra bonus points. Thank goodness. I don't think I'm gonna get this. Yeah, I'm dead. He's gonna he's gonna scream. He's gonna scream at me. He did scream at me. I did say that would happen, to be fair. Can't be too surprised by that. I think I've got this down. Freddy hides from you during the night. Flashing him will stop the clock temporarily. What? Since when? Okay. Thanks for letting me know that. Skip, skip, I know. Boxy, silly, head. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Collect the pieces. We've got this. I've got this. You might... You guys, I don't know. I don't, you, you can do it on your own time. I don't care. We're putting on a pace. We're putting on a pace. Oh, show. Okay, I don't think they're randomized. Freaking good. It, in my book. There's Foxy. Speaking of Foxy, I should go check on that little chap. Foxy. Interesting, okay. Excuse you? Oh, ho, ho. 3 a.m. Don't want to brag or anything, but uh, that's all I'm saying. Pull back away from the monsters lurking in the abandoned restaurant. Shadow offers one more story to clear away the fires. Her mind will you accept? Yes. No, oh, yeah, he's definitely getting a little bit more... Zesty, as the nights go on, for sure. There was once a sick, twisted monster who stalked its victims from the shadows. Its heart far gone from its body, this putrid, parasitic individual lived for the hunt to capture and corrupt the weak, all for the sake of satisfying its disgusting pleasures. I don't know who this guy is, but he would love Los Angeles. Tonight was no different. Oh, a sprink trap. Amidst the rain, this valve vampire of society spotted a young girl left outside the entrance to a family restaurant she looked in from a window as other kids inside had fun and celebrated without her oh it's okay she'll be a sigma when she's older yeah she's probably not gonna be older that's probably what this is getting to 
The monster approached the girl from behind, its body trembling in anticipation to save the perfect opportunity that had been laid out in front of it. Maybe if some humanity was still lingering inside, if some shred of dignity had remained in its hollow heart, it would have felt pity for her. Maybe it would have sympathized with her situation. Inches away from her, its hands reaching out for her back. The sounds of his breathing masked by the downpour surrounding him. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The child felt a chill down her spine. She saw its eyes looking at her in the reflection of the glass. She slowly turned around to face the fear towering over her. Oh, you know what? That sounds a little bit wetter than I was expecting, if I'm being honest. I didn't exactly like the goop on that one. You! You rotten, ignorant, heartless creature. Oh my goodness. This guy's going in. You left that innocent little girl in the alley to die a cold, lonesome death. And you found nothing but satisfaction for taking her life. And for what? You don't remember? We all know that's not true. These meetings have been merely a formality. If it were up to me, I would have left you alone to t be torn apart by your captors limb by limb. Just like you tore the life away from her that night, tossing her into the trash after capturing the fragments of her essence. Right. But now it's time for you to feel her pain. To feel the pain that all your victims suffered. Rot in hell, William Afton, alongside the shadows of your past. I feel like I should have been grabbing all those plushies. Perchance. Um. Okay. What's the goal? Good to know. Alright, I can work with that. Now officially on to night 5. It's essentially just the previous nights, but harder. Each door leads to a random room, and Bonnie and Chica are always going to be in the adjacent rooms. Additionally, they can kind of just already be in the room you move into, and you have to flash them before leaving, so that's fun. This does take me a little bit to figure out though. <laughs> it does seem as though this is completely randomized. Because I'm ending up in places that should not be possible. Yeah, no. <sighs> have I died yet? I have died twice. Both to time constraints. I'm getting really lucky. I'm just going to keep going forward, I guess. Oh, what? No. No way. Bonnie is in your room. You must find him and scare him away before trying to move or you'll be attacked when leaving. Huh? Okay. Well, I will try again, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Run. Scary red text. Scary red filter. We get it. Okay. I used to play um Phantom Forces on Roblox. That was actually like a good shooter, too. I had like a friend I played it with. I'm just gonna hope Bonnie's not... You know, in the room with me, apparently. You just put me in the same place, really. Yep, that's a, a dude. That's a dude. Huh? Where do you expect me to go? Okay, this way, I guess. I... There was a noise in both directions. What do you want me to do? Chicken Bonnie can only be heard if they move into your room, or you hold right-click on a path to a room they are in. I guess maybe, um, I can wait for them to move into my room and then scare them off, maybe? I'm not exactly sure how this works. Yep, that's Chica, I think. <laughs> okay. We're once again in a situation where I kind of just have to... Okay, that's what you have to do. Hope they didn't move in as I was moving out of that room. Cool. I've got it down. Ha 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 ha. Okay, just gotta do a quick once over. I guess I need to listen longer, maybe. Maybe I'm being a bit too impatient with this. It takes a second for the jump scare to pop up. Like, the, the area has to load before it... Okay, well, I guess I'm stuck here waiting. But yeah, you just gotta 
like wait for the the screen to finish brightening up before you can even like move. Yeah, that was a funny joke, wasn't it? That sounds like there's someone in the room with me. That sounded correct. Can y'all stop like coming into my room? Okay, I'm in this situation again. I just gotta wait for one of them. You can't see anything? Me neither. Okay, well that was luckily pretty close. Okay. Let's just gun it, you know? I'm just, I'm, I'm gunning it. I don't care. Yeah, they're quite... they're a little bit loud. I'm listening. There's no one here. Listening again. I'm moving. Listening. No one. Look around. Listen again. No one. Moving. I have to do this. Just so if I die, I can be like, I... That shouldn't have happened. Listening? Oh, yeah, you see? We've got little stinkers like that that don't make any dosh darn noise. What, 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 what was that? I think the issue is if you get put on the show stage, or like Pirate's Cove, with two exits, then Bonnie and Chica are just always going to be at either side. And so you just are required to wait till one busts a gut laughing at you. Giggle? Who's giggling? Nobody. Moving? Yeah, that's... I would call that breathing. The reason I think my first run went so far it's because I didn't get the stage like once. Or if I did, I only got it like like once and I didn't have them on both sides. I feel like I'm getting the stage on every other place I move to. Like at this point. <laughs> Shut up. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, Bonnie. Bonnie likes to be a little gremlin and cheat at the game. Excuse me? Okay, Spinny's is the goaded strat. You just put me in the same place, didn't you? It's put me in the same spot three times in a row. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there he is. There he is. That is still breathing. I'm in danger. I surmised that myself. I'm glad you agree. If Bonnie's here, I'll crap bricks. Bonnie checks are so time-consuming, but like, they're so necessary. I'm, I'm not doing Bonnie checks anymore. I can't afford Bonnie checks. Oh, gosh, okay. What is that? Oh, hey. I hope I was supposed to do that. Well, seems like a good ending to me. <laughs> this isn't like a good time to be just like chatting with me. I'm, I'm kind of like writhing in agony right now. You were once a man called William Afton. In life, you chose to waste time chasing shadows, turning a blind eye at the suffering of others. Leeching off the remnant of life that was robbed from your victims, you fought your fated death until your last run breath. But after decades of running away from your retribution, you perished, trapped by your own machinations. Your body turned to ash, crushed inside one large metallic coffin. Your soul, now naked and vulnerable, 
was dragged down into the darkest depths of the earth and taken by the forces that would decide your fate, and their judgment was clear. Bad. You suck. Stink. This place was born out of their judgment, this colorless replica, a reflection of where your life should have first ended, repopulated by the shadows of your past. True. This is your punishment, an endless night trapped within the abandoned confines of the dream you turned into a nightmare. Congratulations, it's your own personal hell. You truly deserve it. My job here is finished, I'm through trying to find humanity in you. Your chances of redemption are long gone and you have no one to blame but yourself. But I tried. I tried so hard. I didn't find all the plushies. I didn't get all the Funko Pops to save my soul. Over the course of these five nights, you have failed to show regret for your actions nor care about anything other than your escape from this prison. That is so untrue. I, this guy's kind of getting my nerves. He's kind of irritating a bit. You did this to yourself, and as such, I leave you to your fate. This is the end, William. Good riddance. Yeah, it's because I... Yeah. Missing a couple plushies. See, you can't tell me I didn't try. You can't tell me I didn't do anything any of the five nights. That's just, you know, that's leaving out information. That's a blatant lie. You know, like I don't deserve that. Made by Phil Morg, Scott Cawthon. I can't believe he made this game. Honestly, as far as FNAF fan games go, it's definitely got the best story. It's got the best writing, for sure. And the art style and just the way it's laid out, very good in my opinion. The gameplay, as opposed to generally like Five Nights at Freddy fan games tend to make up for a lot of what they don't have with like making the game unnecessarily difficult. I guess that goes for horror games in general. But this was very nice. The only times I ever died, at least on the regular nights, was from the time constraint just because I, I I didn't know where I was going. And once I got that down it wasn't it wasn't bad. Like it's it's a decent challenge. Like you do something right then you win, but if you do something wrong, it's not like you got cheated. It's like, yeah, I, I messed up. Night 5 is just like, pumps that up quite a bit, but still, with the strategy that I was doing, there wasn't much randomness to it aside from whatever, like, something appeared. Whenever I did my check spin around, I mean, that was pretty foolproof, honestly, so. I am gonna try and get all the plushies, I think. Gosh, going back to, like, just the first night after, like, doing that, it's like, ah. Uh, the doorways lead where you think they would, and that's something I took for granted. <laughs> Sorry, Freddy. Let me just walk through here real quick. Again, Freddy? Mind your own business? hey -o. There he is. Alright, that... Took me like two seconds. Yeah, yeah. Can we hurry this up? I don't. Oh, I'm gonna watch Subway Surfers. I swear. Fantastic. Okay, we're doing good. So I just need to find Bonnie. I'm gonna assume that uh, he would be in the left hallway or in like the supply closet. Is that what makes sense to me? Since Chica's on the right and Freddy's on the stage. There you go. Bonnie's in the bag. Screech. Okay, I think we're got it in the bag. Good. Okay, three nights remaining. Whoa, okay. Ah, yes, click team game. I forgot. My game just shut down. <laughs> forgot about that. It's a little detail. Don't press escape on click team games. That'll happen. Okay, we're gonna beat run again. First try this time, by the way. And we'll see if that did anything. We're on the stage again. Oh my gosh, my old buddy. I love the show stage with Bonnie and Chica. Bonnie? Hello? You can't give me a time constraint if you're gonna make me get stuck between Chica and Bonnie like 50 times. Like the other nights, if you fail to reach 6am, you die. The issue is that if you're really unlucky, like me, you can constantly get put into Pirate's Cove or on the stage, which both only have two exits, and basically every time, Bonnie and Chica are going to be at both exits. Now you can't move into a room with Bonnie or Chica, or you die. You have to wait for them to move. But the game has been sure to let me know under no uncertain circumstances that you shouldn't stay still for too long. As not only is there the timer, 
but time goes by faster if you stay in the same place for too long. This wouldn't really be a huge issue for most people, unless you're like me and get both the stage and Pirate's Cove constantly. Waiting around for enemies to come to you wastes time. Fantastic. Stop putting me in situations where I have to wait for enemies to come to me then. Excuse me? Maybe I don't know which one's Chica. Is Chica the low- uh, or is the- the- Ah, uh, uh. oh, don't put me here. Oh, that's loud. That's a man. I did it. Let's see if I get the, the spring trap treatment again. Yeah. Please tell me I got the good ending. What? Huh? What? Did it not save my progress? Huh? I thought there was a good ending if I got all the plushies. Okay, well. Okay, so. The good ending does not change the way- it, it does not change the game in any way. It just gives you custom night. Okay, interesting. Alright. Well. I got the good ending, everybody. We did it. We 100%ed uh, a shadow over Freddy's, I guess. That was fun. What does Custom Night even do? I want to see about this. That looks horrible, and I don't want to do that. Foxy uh, barely got like any time to shine, because he was added on the last night, and I only flashed him like twice, and he just... He, he didn't do anything. I'm not doing 420 mode. Maybe another time. I don't know what the point of that would be, but I'm not doing that. And that was the end of A Shadow Over Freddy's. I'm not doing the custom night. It was a pretty fun and well-made fan game, especially compared to most at this point. It was sweet and simple, which I think a lot of people could learn from, instead of always making things progressively more complicated and convoluted. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you later.